Hi everybody, it's me, a generic non-copyright infringing Muppet, and this video is brought to you by the letter Wait, what? Brought to you by the letter The letter What's going on? Oh god, it's the ghost of Mustafa Kamal Ataturk, and he's here to censor me. Help! Help! Ah! Thanks for that cold open, generic non-copyright infringing Muppet. So here's the deal. Until 2013, the letters Q, X, and W were illegal in Turkey. Why? Well, for the same reason I probably pronounced Mustafa Kemal Ataturk wrong. The quirks of the Turkish language and racism. Wait. But let's start off by talking about scripts. A script is basically a system of writing. A lot of people watching this video probably think of scripts as alphabets. The Latin alphabet, the Greek alphabet, the Hebrew alphabet, the Pokemon alphabet, the Zodiac Killer alphabet, and so on. Now, alphabets are a type of script, but there are also scripts that have no alphabet, like Chinese, or scripts that are sort of in the middle, like Arabic or Hebrew, which are something called an abjad. They only have consonants, and vowels are inferred by the reader. But even the scripts that operate on an alphabet or an alphabet-ish system, where specific squiggles on a page correspond to specific sounds from your face, differ in a number of ways. First off, they look different. Duh. Second off, they don't all include the same sounds. For example, Arabic includes the sound kuf, which I definitely did wrong, and which the traditional Roman alphabet doesn't have a letter for. And the traditional Roman alphabet includes p for the sound p, which doesn't exist in Arabic script. That's why Pepsi, in most languages using Arabic script, is said bibsi. There are tons more examples of this. For example, Roman script includes W, which doesn't exist in the Russian alphabet. That's why Russian accents typically pronounce Ws as Vs. There's no woo sound in Russian because there's no letter for that. Now let's talk the language that's number 16 in speakers, but number one in your heart, Turkish. So we don't exactly know how long Turkic languages were spoken before they were written down because, you know, if stuff wasn't written down, we can't know about it. But the earliest Turkic inscriptions are from around the seventh century, and they were written in something called the Orkhon script, which looks like this. Various Turkic languages, of which there are many, were for a long time written in a variety of squiggles, including Cyrillic, Uyghur, and Greek. But for most of its known history, the language we commonly call Turkish, also called Istanbul Turkish or Turkey Turkish, which sounds like a joke but is real, was written in an adapted Arabic script which looks like this. The problem was, Arabic script wasn't a perfect fit for Turkish because, among other things, the Turkish language has a lot of vowels, but Arabic script, being an impure abjab, has very few vowels. For that reason, among other reasons, including globalization and westernization and not wanting to use 400 pieces of type to print stuffization, Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, founder of the Turkish Empire and guy who at various points in his life looked like both Dracula and a guy who would kill Dracula, decided to Romanize, convert to Roman script, the Turkish language in 1928. The thing was, the Roman alphabet wasn't a perfect fit for Turkish either. For example, Turkish includes sounds like ch and sh, which the classic Roman alphabet doesn't have letters for. So when they switched to the Roman alphabet, Turkey added these six letters for sounds they needed and they got rid of three letters, W, X, and Q, actually banning them from use, because they were for sounds they didn't need and because they were overpowered in Scrabble. And I wish that this was the end of the video and I could move to the part where you use this Skillshare coupon code to learn the skills of paying my mortgage, but there's another part to this story. A part that has much less to do with the quirks of romanization and that has much more to do with some not particularly quirky racism. You see, about 20% of Turkey is Kurds, an ethnic group with a rich history of nomadism, craftsmanship, and getting screwed over by the global community at every possible possible turn. Kurds have their own languages that are derived from the Iranian language family, which is part of the Indo-European language family, separate from the Turkic family that modern Turkish comes from. Northern Kurdish, or Kurmanji, is the one typically spoken by Turkish Kurds, and it's written in an adapted Latin script called the Hawar alphabet, which includes, and often uses, W, X, and Q. So when Turkey banned W, X, and Q, it made it very difficult to write in Kurdish, and meant that Kurdish people whose names included W, X, and Q were unable to have their names spelled properly on official documents, both of which suppress Kurdish language and tradition, which is one of the Turkish government's very favorite pastimes. As most racist laws are, the so-called letter law was applied very selectively, in a way that just so happened to coincidentally just by chance only ever suppress Kurdish people. In 2005, 20 Kurds were fined 100 lira by a Turkish court because the placards they were holding at a celebration of Nowruz, the Persian New Year, spelled it Nowruz with a W instead of its legal spelling, Nevruz. Yet famously, billboards for Xerox could be found in Istanbul, and the company was never challenged by the government. And my Turkish company, QWX McQWXQ, never had a problem. 
The good news for you Williams, Xanders, and Courtney's out there is that in September of 2013, Turkish President Erdogan legalized QWNX as part of a democratization package. It sure is a good thing this Erdogan guy loves democracy so much, huh? Here's a fun little fact. If you take Q and W and X and all the other letters and you mix them up and put them in a really specific order, that's something called writing. And if that's something you're interested in getting better at, you should check out the incredible writing courses available at Skillshare, including the legendary Roxane Gay's class on personal essays. Or maybe you want to learn how to make videos like this one. Why not check out Jordi Van Put's great series on Adobe Premiere Pro? Or classes on productivity from my friend Thomas Frank, or how to learn from my friend Mike Boyd, or how to make the perfect grilled cheese from Elena Karp, who I don't know, but Elena, feel free to email. Skillshare is the online learning community for creatives, where millions of people come together to take the next step on their creative journey, with video lessons and hands-on projects designed to fit any schedule and with options for all skill levels, on subjects from illustration to entrepreneurship to music production. Try out Skillshare Premium for free for a month by being one of the first 1,000 to sign up by clicking the button on screen or heading to the link in the description.